Shaboom shaboom. I love this book. Hello book friends, welcome back to the channel. It's Alyssa. Hello if you're new. Uh, you've seen the thumbnail, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about Death Valley by Melissa Broder. I just finished this and I absolutely love it. I, it was so good. It's so good. I love this. I love this. This is so a me book. I absolutely adore this. So if you've never heard of this before, it just came out. It's got a stunning cover. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what it's about. It's about a woman who is dealing with her father who is in the ICU uh, after an accident and a husband who has an illness that's just getting worse and worse. So she's stressed. She's got like caregiver guilt. She's grieving. She's trying to handle all these things. She's also an author and she's trying to write a book. I really need to know how much of this is auto fiction. But anyway, carrying on. From LA, she goes out into the desert and she goes to like this Best Western and she's supposed to be finishing her book up and having like some space and some time to breathe. And she ends up going out into the desert and going on a hike and finding this giant cactus that has like a rip in it and she like fingers it and opens it up and gets your mind out of the gutter you're probably sweating through your jesus jam like crawls inside and things get weird because it's melissa broder but they get weird in a really introspective and wonderful way uh she keeps going out into the desert and then one day she kind of gets lost and things get weird and trippy from there and throughout all of these hikes and journeys while being lost and dealing with dehydration and thirst and injury and surviving and all these things and wondering if anybody's ever going to find her out in the desert she has to come to grips with everything that's going on with her dad uh, while he's sitting in the ICU decisions that she's made uh, thinking about just how grief ex like it works uh she feels like her mom isn't grieving in the right way or she has like a disconnect with how her mother grieves she feels guilt over the way she grieves she is annoyed with her husband and his own illness mainly because how do you take care of all these people and yourself at some point it just gets to be too much caregiver fatigue is such a huge thing that we forget we want our partners our mothers our daughters our brothers sisters whoever to be like almost robotic in their ability to process and manage everything and let me tell you taking care of a sick person that is also your person in some way is so taxing and i love how this captures that and makes it something to normalize and discuss by putting it in a book like this and i love how she deals with grief over losing somebody who you haven't lost yet i think this pre-grief is something that a lot of us have and you don't know how to articulate especially her father has gone through like multiple codes where he has died and come back essentially multiple times on this journey it is not a like i got sick uh i went to the ICU, i got better no it is it is a rough bumpy journey. There's a lot of emotions that go along with that. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of coming to terms with certain things. There's a lot of understanding your relationship in a different way with that person. Um, it's a very complex time in somebody's life when you are caring for somebody that you love deeply who is essentially dying or on life support in an, an ICU setting. It is incredibly difficult. It is, a con it is something that you're not really equipped to to handle until you get to do it like you're not like taught how to handle it i guess is what i'm trying to say and i do love the scenes where she talks about what it happens at in the icu with her dad there's a lot of things you know i see on the regular i don't think that everybody gets to see until they're in it and i just i love how raw and honest and open this is the way that broder writes is just so approachable to me it's very relatable for characters or at least this one, we'll talk specifically about this lady. Like she has these random, like intrusive thoughts that just pop in in the middle of this. So she's like upset and you're talking about like stuff with her dad or her husband. And then she'll just say something weird about like the check-in guy at Best Western and be like, I wonder how big his dick is. And you're like, you know what? That is totally something that people 
it, it's so human. Like, it's so normal to just have these random weirdo thoughts that pop into your mind. And I love that she, she stays true to that kind of, like, in her characters. I, I absolutely love that. The voice of her characters, the narrative voice of her, her, her narrate of her main characters is just, I love it. Yeah, I thought this book was just absolutely stellar and so different than the Pisces. I feel like the Pisces was just like weird and yeah, it had like some commentary on some things, but like it didn't feel as deeply personal. And this feels so personal. This feels so much like something she has gone through. I do think that my one complaint in general with Broder, and I've only read two books, so forgive me if I'm I'm off base or if I later down the line decide to change my mind on this one, but I feel like she has a difficult time with ending stories. Uh, I don't dislike this ending, but I feel like she even sort of pokes fun at it. Uh, this The penultimate chapter is basically her being like having a conversation with some flowers and basically making fun of the fact that like, so you're just going to like end this? And she's like, yeah, I'm just going to like end this story. And I felt like the Pisces kind of like, I didn't like the way it ended. I feel like, I just feel like Broder is not great at ending books. I didn't mind this so much. I think that I'm glad that she didn't end it at that penultimate chapter. I'm glad that she gave us one more, one more scene between husband and wife to round this out and give us a little bit more satisfaction at the end. And I, I have a lot of like highlighting and stuff in here. There's a lot of like kind of poignant statements and moments in the book. And there's a lot of discussion of like, like, what the hell are we doing here? What does it mean to exist? Like, what is life? Like all these things. And I, there's one thing she says, this is at the end, but I don't think it's, it's gonna like spoil anything for anybody, but it says, that's just it. What's so frightening about existing, it keeps going and also it will end. If I could define my terror of life and dying and loving and all of it, if I could say this is what it is, I would say it keeps going, it keeps going and also it will end. I, I just love that conundrum of life. And I think that's one of the things that's so hard for us to understand is you go and life goes on. Somebody else goes and you keep going on. And how strange is that? That you could have something so final but not final at all and oh i just love it i just need y'all to read it i need you to read it it's so good it's so good because where is here some path some path in some desert in some life and this is the part of the life where i am lost in the desert but the world is round and covered in oceans so why am i here i am here because i put myself here or because i was put here because i am supposed to be here because new age jargon, because my father, because illness, because my husband, because avoidance, because nature, because man versus nature, because I'm not supposed to be here, because hubris, because a novel, because I was lost to begin with, because everything we love we will lose. I am here because a cactus. <laughs> I will tell you the middle bits are very standard sort of weird Melissa Broder. She like has all these like visions and moments where she's grappling with like all of these things that she hasn't had to face like she's she's having to face everything she's been sort of avoiding and it's almost like she goes on an acid trip that's what i would say she does like peyote and meets her like inner child kind of stuff she doesn't meet her inner child but you know like it's that kind of vibe through those is when you get these like really wonderful just like statements about life and feelings and emotions and death and uh, I love it. Uh, this is her and her husband talking. Uh, you're going to die one day. Then what do I do? In a way, it's like you're already gone. I have to prepare. If that's the case, why love anyone? Everyone is going to die at some point. Exactly. It's like two ghosts trying to cuddle each other. Dust cuddling dust. I have a note in here that just says, I wonder if I read so many stories about grief because I spend so much time watching other people die. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a valid question. I don't feel like a 41 year old woman. I don't even feel like a 21 year old woman. The age I was when my bond with my father began to change, but I realized that it could change and would change because I'd become an adult and he was tired and adults with their adult demands for intimacy, their expectations and judgments made him more tired and that I would be treated like any other adult or any other person whose presence weighed more heavily on him than the small light universe of a child. I've been grieving the idea of my childhood father for a long time. I could just keep on reading you some of these. I, 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 
I love it. I love this book so much. I really hope that you pick it up and you read it. And I have to say thank you to Scribner for sending me this. It was, it was so good. This was such a wonderful read and I feel spoiled that I was sent this. And I got little stickers with it too. I need to put these on something because they are adorable. I hope that you all pick this up and that you read it and that you love it too. Please leave your comments down below. Next from Broder, I'll probably read Milkfed because that's what I have here in the house already. I know that it's not everybody's favorite. I think there are some critiques of it. Again, sort of a deeply personal story and touches on some of the things that the author has struggled with herself in her real life. So we'll see how I feel about that, but love this. Five stars. Absolutely wonderful. I want to snap, but I'm not, I'm not a snapper. Pick this up. I'm going to shut up now. I'm babbling. I'm babbling. Am I talking too much? Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me. Trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think we were meant to be.